Welcome back. Now, cliff jumps and backflips are the staples of any extreme ski film. But now a Canadian Paralympian has pushed the sport of free skiing to the limit and landed the first ever backflip using a sit ski for wheelchair users. Josh Dweck has captured his feet in an exhilarating ski documentary. But given that a skiing accident put him in a wheelchair in the first place, how does he think through the risks? Our sports correspondent, Kamian Zeran, reports. Right, there's a lot of things that potentially could go wrong and the outcome could be traumatic. Am I prepared for what could happen? Uh, this was a work of art. Josh Dueck's story starts a decade ago when a flip on skis went wrong. The weight of my ski boots came around and smacked me in the back of the head and it was lights out. He'd broken his back but Josh returned to the mountains as a racer in a sit ski specially adapted for wheelchair users. Triumphed at the Paralympics and X Games. There was something missing though, and what he's done since has revolutionized skiing. I'm not a ski racer, I'm a free skier. This is my dream, this is what I want to do, and I'm not going to be fully satisfied until I give an honest effort to it. Free skiing in the backcountry, deep, deep snow and cliff jumps, terrain that few in a sit ski had ever tried before. Josh's film, The Freedom Chair, has wowed audiences and collected awards the world over, this month at the Kendall Mountain Festival in the Lake District. But how on earth do you make a ski flick in the backwoods of beyond with a guy who can't walk around and inspect his terrain? I can't quite see what's over that edge. I'm not, I'm not able to hike down and then hike back up and you know, assess the environment. So I have to put 100% faith in the judgment of the people that I'm working with. And it put a very different kind of pressure on the production team. When it came to some of the bigger cliffs that Josh hit in the film, you know, I, I would help map it out for him, but he really had to rely on uh, that I was sending him the right way, and uh, and he did, and it worked out. And it's, uh, but I'm impressed that Josh trusts me that much. I'm not sure I'd trust myself that much. <laughs> but then Josh had another idea. He wanted, in his words, to step outside his comfort zone and attempt the first ever backflip in a sit ski, the kind of stunt that had put him there in the first place. But what about when stepping that touch out of your comfort zone involves landing on your head from 30 feet up? when you've already snapped your spine. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a huge concern that I had, right? There's a lot of things that potentially could go wrong and the outcome could be traumatic, uh, even more so than the, the challenges that I already face in my life. And I contemplated that deeply. I asked myself, am I prepared for what could happen? Is my family ready? My wife, could she deal with that? Like, is it fair that I put all these other people in that situation? just for my desire to, to do something scary. The answer, he said, was no, unless absolutely everything could be controlled. So he practiced again and again on an airbag. Then his friends built a jump designed specifically for a sit ski. It sat unused in the British Columbia backcountry for three weeks until the weather cleared, with several feet of soft, fresh snow. The backflip was on. And it's that moment of anticipation, that moment of excitement when everything builds. It's just kind of like that, just a nice little breeze. You can feel the wind, you see the horizon come, the sky go, and then you look for the snow and you bring it around. It's, um, it's the best that I can put words to it. It's incredible. And you can see Kami's full interview with Josh Dweck on our website, channel4.com slash news.